Welcome to Come Report Live. I'm Bob Coleman, and we're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. Lance Sexton, good to see you. John Riossi, always love what you have to say. And our special guest, Jennifer Davis, my neighbor, and this is inside between Southern California and Orange County people. But Jennifer, have you seen the snow in our mountains? Absolutely beautiful. Isn't that? Yeah. There's never snow in those mountains. It's off. Awesome. The saddlebacks are at, what, a thousand feet? You know, just beautiful. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's all right. Let's get back to work. <laughs> John, save us. Uh, what's going on in Washington? <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're waiting. waiting. Uh, oh, we got two Johns today. <laughs> for the uh, for the information about uh, you know, the SBA to. Um, uh, to make a decision about the um, the rule, but um, that hasn't happened yet. Um, and I'm just continuing to uh, you know follow the SD listings, who's uh, you know the banks that are growing, uh, advancing. And I'm I'm really impressed with the uh, A First Bank in Tampa. Um, they have a and they just um, hired a new loan officer to work in the Pacific Northwest, and I think also uh, maybe to oversee their entire seven-day program. But they have. By, by loans, by number of loans, they've become the third largest or fourth largest lender in the country, I believe now, behind um, TD, behind um, maybe the fifth largest. But, they, they, you know, they, they've done almost 900 loans in the first four months of the fiscal year, which is uh, a bank that, that I don't think was, was very high in the listings a few years ago. That's, that's just, um, to me, that's remarkable, just what's happening there. Yeah, well, we have friends down there, so congratulations to them. That's a good job. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about uh, the uh, franchise directory. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Bob. I, I have a little uh, technical problem. I'll, I'll drop off and come back. I tell you what, why don't you drop off? We're gonna we're gonna do some a technical issues. Let's talk, yeah, uh, let's talk to Jennifer, uh, and and have you yeah, and Mike I'm work on your work. your your uh, your sound problems. Jennifer, welcome. You're a 504 expert. I want to talk about 504 refinance. Um, it's out there, it's sort of under the radar, or is it under the radar? What's going on with that these days? Definitely seeing a lot of activity. Uh, we have a number of business owners that are in variable rate 7A loan programs right now, um, and they're looking to fix their occupancy costs, fix their payments. I recently actually just worked with one of my ex small little studio that I frequent, and, you know, they saw their payment more than double. And yeah. for a small business owner to have that type of fluctuation in your occupancy costs, they are absolutely seeking fixed rate financing right now. Lance, you're predominantly a 7A, well, you are a 7A lender. Yeah. Uh, how's that affecting your portfolio and your customers? Well, that option. Bob, uh, being in charge of servicing and liquidation, I'm seeing the impact that uh, this historic percentage rise in interest rates is having on 7A borrowers. They're... A lot of small businesses that got SBA loans and had a 6% rate a year and a half ago that now have a 10 and a quarter percent rate now. And just like Jennifer said, many small businesses have seen their payments almost double. Uh, so I find myself when I have a 7A borrower uh, where the 7A loan was used to acquire commercial real estate and the commercial real estate has an adequate value, There's and Jennifer can share with you, there's certainly some rules. I find myself saying, hey, uh, you know, you need to look into the SBA 504 refinance because you can fix your, just as Jennifer said, you can fix your occupancy costs. Uh, you know, right now, blended rate on 504 is somewhere around six and a quarter, six and a half, give or take, uh, which is much better than 10 and a quarter. So, on 7A loans that have real estate involved, uh, where the borrower is starting to feel the pinch of the increasing interest rates, a and now, and Jennifer will tell you, you've got to have a good payment history. It can't be a borrower who's already gotten 120 days past due on their 7A loan. So as a 7A lender, you've got to be proactive. But it's a great product, absolutely. Um, let's see. I was going to ask, um, Lance, do you retain that first lien position? Do you want to do that as the lender, yeah. or can you do that, or how's, how, do, how do the logistics work? 
Well, in a lot of cases, the participant lender would retain the first position. Uh, in some cases, they may let uh, the borrower find a new first mortgage lender uh, and just get paid off. So it, it, there's not an absolute. I think in most, in a lot of cases, you might see them do that. Jennifer, I don't know what your Yeah, tell me, Jennifer. Experience. Absolutely. Often I will start with the, um, you know, current 7A lender to see if it's the right fit for them. One of the nuances of the program, however, is the third-party lender must have already sold, must have sold that 7A loan. So we have had some circumstances where if the 7A has not been sold, unfortunately the current loan programs do not allow that lender to be the third-party lender for the 504. Interesting. Um, but assuming that the loan has been sold, um, we certainly look to the incumbent lender to see if they want to be the participant bank to see if that's the right fit for them. It's definitely. Very good. Um, so real quick, give me the pros and then I'm going to ask you the cons. But why, why, uh, what, what, why is this so attractive in February 2023 to a Main Street business owner? Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's just fixing your occupancy costs, knowing exactly what you yeah. can expect for the next 25 years, you know, specific to that second trust deed. And as a, a business owner, you know, anything that you can manage in terms of when it comes to your fixed expenses, it makes, you know, makes complete sense to do that. Well, now the um, cons, uh, these aren't PLP loans. They got to be signed off by SBA. Um, how is that process these days? Um, there is a lot of, you know, kind of information that we must gather. We must reach out to the existing 7A lender, for example, and collect, you know, some history on the loan. We must collect a letter from them um, stating that they're unwilling to modify the loan. And so it does create, you know, some, some pain points along the way if we have a lender that's not willing to work with us. Unfortunately, I had a lender hold us hostage for a good six or eight weeks. So it can be frustrating, you know, for the business owner. But We'll stick with it, and we keep, you know, pushing the file along. So, and there's a what's number the, of nuances with the loan program. What's the turnaround at SBA these days in Sacramento? Two business days in Sacramento. No, really? That's yeah, crazy. It is. We've never seen anything like this, and it's a great time to participate in the good loan for, Good for SBA, good for Sacramento for doing that. Because I know yeah, for, I just want to know, did you have your fingers did you have your fingers crossed when you said two business days? Oh, it's just, uh, let's hope it stays that way. But we're really impressed. There's some new leadership there in Sacramento, and um, we're seeing a difference, and it's amazing. And the day of, you know, 15 business days are behind us, and let's, let's hope that Which stays is that a way. month, yeah. Um, yeah and on that two business days, how many are going through and how many are being kicked out? on average? Uh, we're not seeing many screen outs, very few, I would say, or uh, declines. And, um, you know, sometimes there'll be some questions and back and forth. And even then, if there is a question, they're turning that within a matter of as long as we res respond, you know, we're seeing those approvals within two days. Very wow. good. Uh, you also mentioned that, uh, changing the subject a little bit, that you were, uh, TMC development, by the way, is the number two in the country. Number one. Congratulations. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, Barbara. Uh, <laughs> uh, very good. Um, you had just done a customer survey. Tell me about that. I always like to track those and follow those. Absolutely. We surveyed uh, 1,100 of our existing borrowers, and we asked them kind of what their what happened with regards to revenue in 22. We saw a 60% increase with regards to re uh, revenue in 2022. Uh, 21. Per I'm sorry. 60% said the revenue increased. 21% said about the same, 19% um, they saw a bit of a decline, uh, 23 revenue projections, 49% are expecting an increase, 34% are expecting things to stay the same, um, about 17% are expecting a decline. Um, we also asked with regards to employment, whether or not they plan to hire, maintain, or reduce. 41% uh, of our business owners said they plan to actually hire and continue to grow their business. 51% said they maintain their current employment levels, and we saw 8% respond that they plan on potentially reducing overhead. What is the geographic footprint of the owners? We serve the states of California, Arizona, Nevada. Um, we also serve the state of Oregon, but this will not include borrowers in Oregon. So Arizona, Nevada, and California. Do you think that this would be reflective of nationwide statistics? 
It's a great question. It's a smaller pool at 1,100, but um, I think a lot of it just does depend on the geography. Um, we're seeing a tremendous amount of growth in Arizona and Nevada, so um, it, I think a lot of that will depend hey, on hey, Jennifer, if that's for public consumption, send that to us and we'll, uh, we'll release it. Lance, what about those numbers? Is that, uh, how do you feel about those numbers? Well, I think the numbers are on point, Bob, but I do think there's some areas of the country that are struggling a little more with the rising rate environment and struggling a little bit more with, uh, uh, who knows, are we in a recession, John? Somebody please. <laughs> but uh, I think there are areas of the country that are, are struggling a bit more than that, but uh so, I mean, I, I think it's like anything that you do in business, different regional areas have, uh, yeah. you know, a little different, different perspective on how things are going. But Jennifer, but I just want, but half your people say their sales are increasing, right? They're expecting revenue to increase 43% yeah. of them. No, sorry, 49%. So half, half of yeah. our business owners that we've surveyed see revenues increasing in 2023. Chris asked a question. Uh, Jennifer, I'll throw it to you. Have you heard something about an SBA 504 Express loan? I'm not not described in that. Well, heard that there last. was a, there was a program that was talked about. It's like a small 504 PLP type. We do have that loan program, so that is available. The debenture size is below 500,000. It's Express processing. Yeah, I, I, what I, was, I was just wondering if that might be what they're talking about. Yeah. What does that mean, express processing, Jennifer? Um, just kind of some, some limited information that needs to be provided. So essentially when we submit the loan to SBA, they're really just confirming eligibility, um, but they're not kind of, they're relying on us for the underwriting component of it. Well, very good. Very good. Thank, thank you, Jennifer. Awesome. Nice. John, are you back with us? I'm back with you if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. All right, good. I was worried. Uh, I think we were we were talking about Bayview and their numbers. Uh, I want you to pick up on that, and um, let me ask you the the number one question: How are seven? You're looking at that. How are seven A numbers compared to last year? The volume. Well, there's uh, there seems to have been a, bit, a little bit of um, uh, change in the SBA reporting. They're they're not putting out, they haven't updated in recent days the, um, the weekly lending reports. So I, I don't have a point in time comparison. I can tell you that, that as of uh, yesterday, I guess they, they said the number was the 26th, uh, the 7A um, volume was about 10.1 billion. So if you, if you just do a straight line projection, that's, you know, pushing up against the cap. I know they have various ways of, of um, uh, of, of managing to get through the year without shutting down. So I don't think there's, no one's talked about any danger of that. Obviously now the, the administrator has the ability to, um, to increase um, the funding, you know, by I think it's 15%, you know, at the end of the year. So, so no, no real worries there, but, but obviously uh, the program is doing very well this year. And we've talked, uh, you know, about a number of banks that are, and I see the press releases, I see, you know, in the disclosures, you know, companies that are um, at least in 7A that are, expanding, planning to expand, planning to get into the business um, in a national way. Um, so, and I, I think there's going to be some more announcements um, along those lines this week, probably as early as tomorrow. Um, I will uh, you know, be able to report better next week. Um, but, but I think, you know, what I've heard is that there's going to be a, a relatively big announcement tomorrow involving SBA. Can you give us a hint other than big announcement? I can only say uh, there's a Bruno and 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 the the people plan to make an announcement tomorrow morning. Very good. Okay, I well, that's fine. Hey, I want to talk about the franchise registry. Is that something you follow, John? By the way, John's a, a reporter with American Bank who does a great job. Make sure you read his stuff. That's we, why he's here. So <laughs> we've, uh, we've followed it, and we know that that part of the uh, the new rule, um, uh, the proposed rule. Um, uh, that, that, that may or may not be coming out. I, I suspect it will come out, but just in a different form. But the proposed rule with the uh, involving the moratorium also um, has a proposal or a, a portion that would eliminate the franchise directory. Uh, and there's been um, some talk about that. What my sort of what we're looking more closely is the uh, 
you know, the authorization letter. So, you know, they're talking about eliminating that too. And it, it just seems like a lot of small banks, and I know we've talked about this, Lance has talked about it, and, um, yeah. rely on that, um, you know, to sort of, uh, as, a, as a guide to, to, to keep their, uh, uh, their lending and their practices in line with, um, with, with SBA standards. And, and there's a lot of uh, concern about that. Um, John, what am I missing? I'm with Mike Rosman here. I don't see a big deal. Um, I know a lot of other people do. No. What am I missing when I make that statement? Uh, I, well, I want to let Liz, uh, wants to talk because I, I tend to agree with you, Bob. But, uh, let, let well, I, in ahead, terms Liz. of eliminating the franchise directory, I see very limited, yep. if any, impact at all. Um, you know, a lender has to look and underwrite yeah. the franchise and evaluate the potential for success of that franchise. And just the fact that it's on an SBA list really doesn't, I mean, it tells us what we can't do. It doesn't really tell us what we can do. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't see that is impacting the industry that much. Now, getting rid of the authorization, what John said, there are a lot of institutions that are not going to know how to behave. Oh, uh, it's like, give them, give them, it's come like, on. It's, we, we it's got like giving a bunch of uh, elementary school kids a bunch of fireworks and matches. No, but uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the deal is small participant lenders, lenders with limited SBA experience, rely a lot on the SBA authorization in order to compliantly close their SBA loan in order to protect the SBA guarantee. And while I do agree there are a lot of lenders that don't have to have the authorization to do it right, uh, you know, because of PPP and all the new lenders that come have come to the table, uh, you know, I, I think we still do need an SBA loan authorization. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with Lance. Again, we need science. Yeah. All in 1920, our lenders are smart. They know how to prepare a note. Anyway, Jennifer, I'm <laughs> bail us uh, out. Are, you know, our, our closing attorneys rely on that authorization to make our, sure that we have to make we, their money. We are having difficulty what that might look like with the elimination. Okay. Well, yeah. well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We're, we're, we're and I venture to say, Bob, that even if they say you don't have to have it, there are a lot of lending institutions that will probably continue to produce one. Well, that's fine. I mean, I, that's, yeah. I'm willing to go there and let, them, let lenders do what they do. They know how to make loans, conventional loans, without an SBA loan authorization. Yeah. I think they can make an SBA loan. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer, I'm going to let you uh, uh, finish up uh, franchise directory. What's your opinion about that? Uh, we're we're excited about the proposed changes. Absolutely, I think it's um, and and then some of the affiliation requirements with regards to management agreements and dealer agreements. Um, you know, kind of the elimination of that. We're we're excited about it and just kind of making making the loan program a little bit easier for our borrowers, particularly the, the loosening up around the affiliation. Uh, real quick, be sure and fill out the uh, compensation survey. Get a free copy of that. Uh, the, we have a couple weeks open on that. The um, ending date is March 15th, and uh, we sent it out this morning. And it, it, sh I, it should literally take – these are the questions. We put the questions up. It should take you two, three minutes max on that. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us. Please come yeah. back. Let us know what's going on with 504. John, um, I will hold your feet to the fire, and uh, we'll be looking for a big announcement tomorrow. Lance, as always, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today for Coleman Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Have a good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for today's episode. If you like today's content, hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and click that bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Thank you again for joining us today and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Catch you next time.